So let's take a look at some budget-friendly ideas for your layout. As we know, this hobby can be expensive, so let's see different things I've tried to save some money. So some of these ideas I've picked up by watching YouTube or reading articles, and some of them I just thought up as things went along. But by no means are any of these really original. I'm sure a lot of people out there have tried some of these, and if you're one of them, let me know. How does it work for you? To do a fabric skirt around this entire layout, it would have cost thousands of dollars for a denim or other fabric material. But by using this landscaping fabric, I think it took me three full rolls, which is under $100 for the entire layout. Can't beat that. Landscape fabric. About twelve or thirteen dollars for a whole roll. I think it's a fifty foot roll, yeah. It's three foot wide, so it's almost the perfect width to reach from the layout to the floor. I hang the fabric or skirting to the layout using push pins. I just tack them in with a hammer. You could also use small screws or nails. Works great. Now I'm going to show you how I make my roads. I've tried many different materials, including plaster, or in this case, smooth it. And that's what this street and this cul-de-sac are made out of. It's the Woodland Scenic Smooth It product. It's a plaster product. It works very well, but it's a little bit more work compared to what I'm going to show you. In fact, on this bridge, that's a good example of it. Now this bridge is, is actually made out of sheet styrene from Evergreen. But I have an even more economical way of doing roads. Let me show you. Now the Evergreen sheet styrene products are great and I've used a lot of them. Especially when you need thicker plastic sheets or scratch building materials like brick and siding and so on. But a lot of these streets and parking areas that you see here we're actually made out of this product. What is this? Well, these are thin sheets of plastic that you can buy almost anywhere. And that's what they are. There are those no trespassing signs or those beware of dog signs. And this is a three pack. I know you can buy them individually for under a buck and you get a decent sized sheet of thin plastic, they cut well, they take paint well, and it's just a great economical way to make streets, roads, parking areas, on and on. You can even use them in some kit bashing and scratch building projects. In fact, these grade crossings right here were made by using those signs. Also, this dock wall that's in here, and also the one that's over by the steel mill, that's all made out of those signs. Here's more of those signs that I've used for pavement. All of this in here is signs. All of the pavement over here is signs. So I've used it everywhere. Another product that I've used for roads is this foam material called, this one's called Silly Winks. I think there's a couple different versions of it. I think they come in different thicknesses as well. 
this particular one is uh, about two millimeters thick so I think they have them thicker than this but this particular sheets under a dollar I think it's 89 cents this one thing came from Hobby Lobby but I think I've seen them at other stores like Walmart in the craft section and again this works great they're already gray so that works great for roads they cut very well they glue down very well in fact this stretch of street right here is made out of that the parking lot is made out of one of those trespassing signs and you can see how they blend together really well even some of the scenery you can use real products which are free right in your backyard this over here is one of the scenics this here is dirt out of the backyard these log piles here are made out of sticks out of the backyard that I've just cut real sticks cut from our firewood I even have a couple roads around the layout that are made out of sand again right out of the backyard Along the pier here, the prototype is built up with large rocks and boulders. And I'm going to represent that by using gravel out of the road. Free. I don't know if you can tell, but in here are actually little rocks and pebbles. Just out of the backyard or out of the road. Again, free. If you're going to be doing a lot of rocks, and you need to make a lot of plaster molds then go with plaster of Paris or something similar to that I have found a carton of it for about three or four bucks and it goes a long way here's a couple other ideas like using spackle or joint compound buying your glues in gallon sizes goes a lot further and then these 88 cent or 90 cent paints in fact, they might even be cheaper than that. These work great. These are acrylic paints. I use them on everything. And as far as spray paint goes, I just try to find some of the generic paints. The colors are just fine. Cans last a while. They work great. Whole bunch of mostly Walmart paints down in there. Maybe a few Rust-Oleums. Krylon is very nice. It's a little more expensive. But in many cases, like this one here, just go with the Walmart brand, if they have your color and everything. And of course, a lot of those apple barrel paints, most of them are a dollar or less. Versus Woodland Scenics here, which is very nice. I'm not knocking Woodland Scenics. In fact, I use a lot of their product. And I do like this earth undercoat. I find it works great as a stain. But it's like 8 or $9 for that one bottle. And this bottle of paint here is $1. As many of you probably already do, I make my own glue. This is about a 50-50 mix of white glue and water. Maybe a little drop of dish soap or rubbing alcohol. And then I just put it in one of these bottles, squeeze bottles. Make sure I cap it somehow. It holds up in there real well. This has been in here for a couple of years and hasn't dried out. Looking up at the pegboard here, it reminded me of things like using Storm brand caulk, tape, paints, these foam brushes, which are really cheap. I know I have some straws back here. You can use those for tubing and piping. We got our cotton swabs. You can use these for various things. Um, inside the grade crossing thing, I've kept all the shims and extra pieces of plastic. You never know when you can use those. A lot of different ideas. Cheap putty knives. Even the tools you use. You don't need anything elaborate in many cases. It's like a $10 soldering iron and on and on. Scrap pieces of sandpaper. Lots of ways to save some money. As you may recall, I've done a video in the past where I showed how I make my water. I 
made a Mackinac Bridge diorama in that video. And I used this Mod Podge, the Gloss Luster. Don't know if that's focusing on that well or not, but you get the idea. So, first, you start with just a bare surface, plywood, or what have you. You might want to seal your surface with caulk or flex paste. Then you just paint it the color you want. You put three or four layers of the Mod Podge. That's what I find it takes to get a nice shine and to get the ripple effect. Turns out quite, quite well. I've used that in many places around the layout. Here's another shot. This little patch here I actually use an ultra gloss Mod Podge. It's a lot more expensive and it almost looks like the exact same material as the Woodland Scenics realistic water product that you just pour out of a bottle. Um, the Woodland Scenics product is very nice and I have used that as well just to kind of compare the two. But to, for an economical sake the Gloss Mod Podge is definitely the way to go. Here's a good comparison. This part of the Shiawassee River here is actually modeled by using the Woodland Scenics product. And then if you swing over here to this part of the river, this is Mod Podge. You can see a little bit of white in it where it has it completely dried. Sometimes it can take several months for this stuff to dry completely. That's another little bit back there using the Mod Podge. But you can see there is even a little bit of white in this. So they're very, very similar. There they are side by side. Mod Podge in the corner, Woodland Scenics here. This is kind of the base of the water here. All this is is paint on foam right now. This isn't quite the final color. And then over here you can see where the Mod Podge has got three or four layers. And how that looks so much more complete. This is kind of how it starts, and this is how it turns out. As far as the backdrops are concerned, what I'm using right now is this foam board, which you can pick up for about 88 cents a sheet, and they work very well. They cut well, they take paint well. Now in the future, I might be changing them out for some plywood or some other material, but for now they work great. And when it comes to buying your rolling stock, your structures, your locomotives, some of the things you can't necessarily just buy from Walmart or wherever, it pays to look around, shop around. In some cases if you can, wait a little bit on an item. I know sometimes it's hard to wait because of availability. They only make so many and if it's something for your layout you want to jump on it. Now these two locomotives, fortunately I was able to wait and I got them at a steep discount or clearance price. The GT $250 locomotive, I found it on clearance for $150 but this DTNI probably takes the cake. I found this thing on clearance for $20. This is a DCC equipped locomotive. It does not have sound, but it is DCC and it costs me a whole $20. So it pays to shop around, look for those bargains, and you'll save a ton of money. You don't necessarily have to have the latest and greatest or most expensive locomotives. I know sometimes, yes, not much we can do, but other times, if you can wait, wait, find those deals. Brands sometimes can play in what kind, 
kind of discounts you're going to find. However, keep in mind, this GT, this is an Athern Genesis DCC with sound and everything. And I got it with shipping for 150 The DT and I, this is a Bachman unit. But still, for $20, for a locomotive that runs well, is DCC equipped, it just can't beat that price. Same with rolling stock. Three of these passenger cars here are Walther's Proto, which retailed for about $70 to $80 each. But I was able to find them on a clearance for $30 to $35 each. Over half off. If you want to talk real cheap, this trailer was my first scratch building project ever, back when I was about 16. I built this thing out of spare parts and cardboard and paints and things we had laying around. You can build a structure or anything out of spare parts. I did not spend a penny on this mobile home or even the shed there in front of it sorry about the shadow yeah all built out of spare parts just laying around so I'm sure I missed a few things or maybe there's some products or ideas I'll use in the future that I'll be able to share with you on a, another video if you've used any products that have saved a lot of money let me know how, how, how well has it worked? Well, that's going to be about it for now. Now we're approaching Christmas. Everybody be safe out there. Enjoy the holidays. Don't forget to subscribe and comment. Give me those likes. I'll see you next time.